Hello, this is Mark Rodwell. I'll be giving an introduction to the IEEE MTTS Distinguished Microwave Lecture on 100 to 300 gigahertz wireless communications. I'm at the University of California, Santa Barbara campus. Why are we interested in the frequency band between 100 to 300 gigahertz? The answer is because of high capacity. By going up to higher frequencies, there's more bandwidth available. Furthermore, at high frequencies, even an array of antennas at half wavelength spacings with many, many elements can be very, made very small. And that means that we can radiate many, many signal beams and use the radio spectrum over and over again. And this spectral reuse greatly increases the capacity. We can do that both in an endpoint link with hardware that looks like this, or in a backhole link, bringing the signal back to the internet backhole with geometries that look like a line or in a rectangle. All of this is great. The capacities can approach or even exceed a terabit per second, but we need to understand that the range is gonna be very limited, both because of high lambda squared over R fris or beam diffraction losses, and also because under unfavorable weather, the atmospheric attenuation can be very high. So to get reasonable propagation distances out of these systems, first we need arrays on transmit and on receive with many, many elements. On receive, we need low receiver noise figure. On transmit, we need power amplifiers that are very, very efficient. A couple of concept systems to give you a sense of what can be done with these high frequency systems. If we imagine a base station with 128 elements, 128 antennas, 128 RF signal chains, and we imagine that sending signals to 64 independent people, each getting 10 gigabits per second of data. If we wanna do that over 70 meters range, even when it's raining really heavily, and we want 17 dB of safety margins for various real world factors that are sure to happen. If we take a reasonable receiver noise of 8 dB, then the transmitters would each need to radiate 100 milliwatts which is certainly within the present state of the art. So that's bringing the signals to the endpoint user on a hub. Well, to get signals to the hub, we need backhaul. So we also need either optical fiber backhaul or millimeter wave backhaul. So a concept system for high capacity near terabit millimeter wave backhaul might have eight transmitters and eight receivers on a telephone pole, each transmitter radiating 80 gigabits per second so that the overall capacity is 640 gigabits per second. Again, if we do a quick link budget analysis, if we want to support half a kilometer range when it's raining very heavily, and we want sensible safety margins for all of the degradations we would expect in a real system, then if the receivers have about 8 dB noise figure, a real world value, then the transmitter power amplifiers would need to have an output power about 50 milliwatts. Again, this is within the state of the art. So we'll talk more about that later and in the long talk. Now to design such systems, we must do um, both transistor development, high frequency circuit work, and a lot of advanced work in the baseband signal processing. Let's concentrate on the RF front ends. To build a good transmitter, we need efficient power amplifiers. Specifically, we're at concern about power added efficiency the difference between output power and input power of the amplifier divided by the DC power. We also need high power density, meaning a lot of output power per unit size of each transistor so that the transistors in the die area don't become large. On receivers, what matters is not simply the noise contribution of a single stage, but the noise contribution of a cascade of stages. And that of course is the cascaded noise figure expression given here. At high frequencies, the transistor performance is not very, very good, and the gain per stage is low. And so if we are not careful, we're going to need to use many, many stages. Um, there's problems there with large die area. There's problems there with a lot of DC power consumption. But above all, if you use many stages, the gain compression and the nonlinearities of the stages, each stage accumulates over those multiple stages. So one of the key challenges that we'll discuss in the longer presentation is at these high frequencies where transistor performance is marginal, how do we design the key circuit blocks, power amplifiers and low noise amplifiers for performance as close as we can get to the fundamental transistor limits? This is particularly critical 
at high frequencies where the transistor underlying performance is not all that great. Here are a few examples of representative results we'll share along with many, many others. Parameter fires varying in frequency from 140 to 266 gigahertz, with output powers varying in the range of 100 to 200 or 50 milliwatts, and varying efficiencies over this frequency range. One of the key challenges in these high frequency systems is packaging and arrays. We start off by considering a classic problem of an airborne radar where a plane might be steering a radar beam both horizontally and vertically over 180 degrees. To do that, you need a two dimensional array where the elements are at a half wavelength spacing. In a high frequency system, that half wavelength is getting very small. And so you have very little space to fit in the electronics and very little space to get out the heat. So how do you handle that challenge? That's a major problem we will discuss in this presentation, but not only how to design such two-dimensional arrays, but how to look at systems and understand that often you don't need to. In many high-frequency systems, it's sufficient to have linear beam scanning with a one-dimensional array, and in such systems, the physical design of the system is much simpler and easier. In other cases, you need two-dimensional array, uh, two-dimensional beam steering, but you don't need to do it over 180 degrees, and the element spacings then are larger, and again, the physical design constraints are, are reduced. So these, again, are key design challenges in such high-frequency systems and challenges that we will discuss in the longer presentation. In terms of packaging technologies, there are a variety of available packaging technologies for connecting ICs to antennas within arrays at frequencies from 100 to 1,000 gigahertz, including E-field probes to waveguide, ribbon bonds, flip chip technologies, whether C4 or copper stud, wafer scale fan out packaging or hot vias. And we'll talk about all of the properties of these, what frequency range they're good at, and what the limitations of these technologies are, will be. One of the really encouraging things is technologies that are largely being developed, not for wireless, but for integration of microprocessors with memory at great density, turn out to be packaging technologies that work awfully well in terms of high frequency systems. And these can be leveraged to build these high frequency arrays. In terms of results, I'll just show you a few, returning to that concept hub system. Here I'm showing you real hardware, an eight element array tile. In this case, the transmitter with CMOS ICs to do the frequency conversion and indium phosphide power amplifiers to increase the output power. Here's the eight element transmitter array. There have been various experiments with these arrays and there are more ongoing, but here, for example, and it's, it's a demonstration by Samsung, um, research North America at two uh, gigabits per second over 100 meters. And this is using uh, hardware that's a combination of Global Foundries, Teledyne, and Kyocera in terms of the underlying chip technologies. Here is a second demonstration system, and we'll discuss a number of them, where there are 200 gigahertz transmitter and receiver ICs in indium phosphide. The bandwidth of the ICs is on both transmitter and receivers about 25 gigahertz. Power amplifiers put out about 50 milliwatts. The receivers have about eight and a half dB of noise figure. These have been integrated into transceiver modules where the signal is first radiated by a small antenna array on quartz and then collimated and link demonstrations have been used. Presently, we have these single beam demonstrations over the size of a room. We're working to multi-beam demonstrations at high data rates. So we'll talk about the design and the experimental results of these systems and what needs to be done to drive these to higher performance and greater practicality. So to summarize, uh, in developing systems for 100 to 300 gigahertz, the overall goal and motivation is to build systems with a backhaul or endpoint with aggregate capacities approaching a terabit per second. It needs to be fundamentally understood that the maximum range of these things is limited on the range of about half a kilometer, both because of diffraction and atmospheric losses. The beams are easily blocked, and so we need redundancy in the form of mesh networks. In the longer presentation, we'll talk about the various IC technologies used to realize these and how they're progressing and what the cost performance trade-offs will be. We'll talk about the packaging technology the challenges and the various technologies that are available to realize high frequency um, packaging uh, in, for such systems. 
And in addition, talk a lot about the baseband digital signal processing, the dynamic range and the progress in the uh, computational beamforming. So thank you so much for attention. And I hope that you'll be interested in, um, in hearing the longer talk. Thank you.